So please welcome Kendra Arneson. Thank you. Okay, I'm not usually a speech giver, so you guys bear with me. I'll try to make this as painless as possible. Um, to explain to you where I live, I am indeed the one on the very end. I am at point five on Highway 23 in South Blackman's Parish, Louisiana. Keep in mind through what I have to say that I am the mother of a five-year-old little boy and an eight-year-old little girl who looked like their dad. That being said, when this first happened, I really didn't know what to do, who to ask questions to, who was going to give us answers. The first day we were introduced to anyone from BP, they came into our building and said, BP does business right. <laughs> yeah, can you believe that? BP does business right and we're here to take care of everything, folks. Well, 61 days later, that's a joke, to say the least. Just to give you guys kind of a perspective of where I've been. Four weeks ago, I set up a town hall meeting and I indeed did pin down I was bald. And I had them stuttered by the end of their speech. At any rate, I was invited the following week to go behind enemy lines. They gave me, of all people, security clearance to go into the base of operations meetings in Venice, Louisiana, 8 a.m. Open door invitation to sit like a fly on the wall. Can you believe it? It's really going on. They also gave me security clearance to go into the Homa Incident Command Post, which is over the entire region of Louisiana. I've been in Coast Guard planes all the way out to the site itself, helicopters, boat rides. I have been everywhere anybody could ever want to go to really get an inside look as to what's going on. Now, I want to start by telling you guys that I am not at all impressed. Someone told me this morning that they thought I had crossed over. Well, I picked the team a long time ago. My father was a commercial fisherman, and my husband's a commercial fisherman. Every man that I've ever known, loved, and respected is on the water. They're good men. At any rate, for the past week, I've heard in the ops meeting, we need to cut costs. Yes, that is what they have said, that they need to cut costs. I almost came out of my chair the first time I heard it, but I'm trying to stay where I am because someone has to be on the inside overlooking and seeing as to what's going on on the ground. That being said, where I've seen cutting costs is quite unfortunate. What we call in Venice, what they call, the first we've got to understand this phrase, ponies and balloons. Well, the only place I've ever seen ponies and balloons is at a circus, right? At any rate, about a week and a half in, I learned what ponies and balloons meant. Ponies and balloons means that every time an official is headed anywhere near here, they get a heads up. All assets are deployed into the hardest hit areas. The official comes in, flies over, good job fellas, pats them on the back. When the official disappears out of the hardest hit area, so does 75 to 80 percent of the response. It's happening. It's happening every day. I'm watching it. I'm seeing it. I don't agree with it. Anyone in this room is not going to agree with it. And our great nation's not going to agree with it. We are expendable to these people. We do not matter. Now, I'm going to get off that. And I'm sorry I talk in circles, but that's the coon ass that we have. Y'all can follow me and let me know. At any rate, I'm going to go into the health issues for a moment, if, if you don't mind. Um, I sat through endless hours of meetings with BP's safety officers. I sat through an hour and 45 minute meeting with the Coast Guard safety officer, both in the Homa Incident Command Post, as well as a gentleman from OSHA. In order to obtain a respirator for our responders, now this isn't just commercial fishermen, I'm talking about Coast Guard members, all responders, people off the street, everybody involved. Number one, they have to fill out an ocean questionnaire. Number two, they have to have a physical evaluation by a medical professional. But EPA is doing air monitoring. Everything's okay. It's great. Yeah, imagine that. At any rate, there is, in fact, 
some act somewhere in OSHA's law that says that volunteers have a right to wear a volunteer respirator. But, as we all know, BP has taken over our golf. BP rules right now our golf. I mean, bottom line, that's who's in charge of this situation. They couldn't even run, run their own company and they are in charge of this response. I'm totally appalled. They can't wear a volunteer respirator because if they're not properly trained, BP's rules are they have to be properly trained in order to wear a respirator. Now, BP said that they will provide the training and they will provide a respirator, but everything's okay. So they don't need to be trained and they don't need a respirator. And as far as the right to wear volunteer respiration, guess what? If you don't follow BP's rules, you don't have a job. And that's what they told me. Now, I asked them to discuss the seven men that were brought, one by helicopter and six by ambulance. I asked them if they were at liberty to discuss that with me. And they said, yes, ma'am, we are. I guess these guys didn't realize who they were talking to. Number one response from Mr. Hayward 